So let's just start on the mat and we'll use the roll in a bit, but I just want to start with some regular knee stirs and stretches here. So you'll roll on back onto your back. Uh, let's pull the right knee into your chest and stretch the left leg out long. As you hug the knee in, try to reach out through your sits bone. Pull far with the elbows to relax the shoulders away from your neck. And then the left hand can be at your side or on the left tip bone as you stir the right leg, circling that thigh on the socket. So just some nice, smooth, easy movements here to rotate the leg on the joint surface and draw a circle with your hand on the knee. And then we'll reverse the circles. Just starting to warm up that hip joint, the little fluid. It's softer and more oil like. And now we'll pull that knee in as close to your right chest as you can. Look it in. And then take it slightly to the outside of your ribcage as if you're pulling it up into the armpit. And keep that left hip flat. A little extra weight into it. Next, we pull the right knee slightly across the body, but up on a high diagonal towards the left shoulder. You use the left hand there to pull the knee up and in. And try to reach out through that right sit bone. Maybe you can take the right hand on the foot and push it further away from the armpit, away from your waist. Next, the right next to the knee, the left arm down to your side. And we open the out so that the thigh is perpendicular to the torso, either supporting the leg from underneath or pressing it down from above. And I would take your left hand on the left hip and press and try to rotate the left side of the body into the mat. Here we're going to stretch the upper inner thigh across the front of the pelvic girdle. And then we'll pull the knee up, so chest, and the left hand is on the knee, the right arm extends out perpendicular to your torso, and then we take the knee over to the other side. The right knee is reaching to the left. The right shoulder blade is heavy. The gaze out over your fingertips as we reach for the wall. And now exhale, unwind the body, come down left shoulder, waist, the right glute, and then pull the right knee. To your chest once more. Just give a little hug, a little tug, and then we release that leg forward, stretching it out and shaking out both legs. We already feel that right leg, that right side is dropped in towards the ground, a little deeper, a little heavier, and the leg feels longer on that side. So now we pull the left knee in and brace it in. Think of reaching out through the sits bone on the left side. And just give it a minute while you breathe deeply in and out. Next, we pull the left leg to the left armpit, the right hand to the right hip bone, press. And try to stay a little heavier on the right side. We'll just rotate the body to the right, drop it down into the mat surface as you pull the knee away from that heavy right hip. And then we can bring the left down lower. The foot can basically rest on the ground or sit elevated. Either way is great. And you're going to open that inner thigh by reaching out and heavy with that left knee. And again, you're trying to rotate the right hip down into the mat. Then we swing that left knee up and across the body. Right hand on the left knee. Extend the left arm, look at it so you get the nice rotation in the neck and the cervical spine here. Just a couple of nice slow breaths right now. Unwind, come back to center. Those hips equally grounded on the back and then pull that left knee in again to the left chest. And then slide that leg forward along the mat and down, reach out, and then maybe take your hands to your front press. Feel they both have widened and are externally rotated a little bit. And the legs themselves also externally rotated, so it's more comfortable at this point. 
All right, so for here, we're to pull your left knee in, lift the right leg up to the ceiling, look forward, and we're grabbing your roller. Take it across under the shoulders. And hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm glad you came to class. I know it's hard to get inside after being outside on such a beautiful day, but we'll make it worth your while. So support your head with your hands, elbows up and in, and then just begin to arc back. Cross the ceiling if you're trying to pull the elbows open, open your chest. Go ahead and hang back into your hands so that you can really stretch your throat. And then tip your chin to the chest. Come up at the head, pull the elbows down, and as you rock the pelvis forward the tail up, sinking the wrist leg down. And then the tail rocks towards the ground. As you reach back, look behind you. Your back makes an arch here over the side. The support of your lower, and then exhale, chin to chest, push the air out of your lungs, and sit down your nose into the abdominal wall, and then we arch back again. So the head, the elbows, pull the pecs wide here, and then exhale, lift your head, come forward and in, stretch up the back. And one more time, doing this. And come forward here. Since the tail is lifting, you're putting your weight a little higher up on the sacrum. So that flat bone really is supporting you here on your back. Okay, and then you come to center, press down through your feet, lift your hips, and then just go back and forth along your Rib cage along the thoracic spine. And you can curl up as you push off your feet and come with the roller to the base of the ribs. Pull the knees forward, lift the hips throughout the head as you bring the roller up toward the top of the shoulder. And we go back and forth here, just really getting a deep tissue massage into this upper back. Stay on the support of the rib cage here. And then one more time, function. Lower the hips down. And let's turn it over onto your side to do that full body rotation here with the knees stacked and bent. The roll is going to be angled across your mat, so it ends up higher by your face, lower towards your hip. And you're going to take the roller right into the armpit here. Maybe only about eight inches or so in front of the armpit. That's the end of your roller. Support your head with both hands. And we begin, hips are stacked, look down, chin to chest, and then pull the top elbow in, hug the roller. And then we bring your gaze across the roller, across the floor to the wall, up the wall to the ceiling, and you can lift the bottom arm as you go back. Be sure both scapula are on the roller here, and then you can even hang back into a little bit of extension. The elbows as wide as you can make them. Without strain. And then lift your head a little bit with your hands, chin to chest. And we're starting actually minus two. So we're starting with the knee, then the hip, then the waist, then the ribs. It's so what the body does not want to do. But then it actually works your abdominals more if you do it that way instead of the way I just started to teach you. And so you bring the gaze across the floor, up the wall to the ceiling. Roll across the scapula. You might feel those lats complain a little bit. If it's too much, you can always add extra padding, either to you or to your roller. And then we start knee, then hip. Then think of the tailbone, the sacrum spinning, and then the vertebrae start rotating one after the other from the bottom to the top to bring you all the way around and down. And at the end, you tuck your chin in, look down towards your chest. Embrace the roller with your elbows. We'll do this one more time. You start with the gaze, the head starts to move, then the neck work down the spine as you go back into extension with this rotation. And still supported here. 
forward, lean forward, move the hips forward, come around, look up your body, tuck the chin in, now close the rollers, and feel that stretch wherever you feel it. And then we're coming on off to do the other side. Remember the roller slightly angled. You snug it in right into the armpit here. Hips and knees are stacked. Hands support your head. And again, now we're looking down at our chest. Pull the elbows down and in around the roller. Maybe the forehead touches if the chin is tucked into the base of the throat. And then the gaze starts to move forward. Lift your gaze. Look at the ceiling. Bring your gaze. Cross the ceiling above you and then behind you. You pick up the bottom elbow as you reach all the back. And keep pushing the top forward even as you go back to the hips. Lift the chest with the elbow and the knees. And now we'll try to do this one the front way. So you start going forward with the knee. Move the head. You're going to drag the body over. This way, you have to use a big exhale to pull the rib cage around and over. And then finally connect the elbows in. The head tucks in. And we start again with the gaze across the roller, out across the floor to the wall, to the ceiling. Inch by inch across the back. Let your head fall backwards into the safety net of your hands. Open the chest, try to pull that top forward again. Knee forward, top knee. And now we're coming knee bend hip. You feel the weight of your body as you smooth here. Big exhale all the way around. And by pulling the elbows down and together, you get that lovely stretch between your shoulder blades. And then we can come on up, right? Do we just do two or is that three? Oh, good, we get to do another one. Coming around. Start it again. I always say I have this fabulous, lovely, and expensive education, and occasionally can concentrate correctly. But I'm glad it worked out in the face, so let's do this again. And now here, roll the knee forward, pull the knees forward, up, around, over, and down. Down into your chest, curve the body here, and then we can unwind and come up. Okay, you also just put the ball aside and lay it onto your back here for our roll ups. Yeah, what was your major in school? I was um, psychology because I love linguistics and like the cognitive studies so, but I was really such like a liberal arts girl I just studied like everything I could but I did not do well with it not the way my body my brain worked <laughs> so here we go so I think bio engineer maybe but yeah <laughs> yeah so different skills at different points in your life so we'll reach the arms forward look down curl the toe up work the spine down here into the ground, and you can do sort of long, the head settles down, and we lift the arms up to the ceiling, and the back leg right here. Open up that chest, reach out long. This stretch will also affect your lats in a good way. You bring your arms up, and the blades start to lift the head, neck, and chest. Exhale, pull up here. Dive forward, rounding over, comes over your legs. Suck the belly back so you make a horseshoe shape out of your spine. And then we're coming on back. The arms can lift higher. If you want to challenge your control, lower. If you need that in order to keep the integrity of the movement, really good. Take it all the way back. You want your body open, but let's stretch from your fingers to your waist, to your hips, to your feet. And we lift again. Look up here. Dive forward, stretch, cross over your legs. 
and then we unwind the rotation of the pelvis here on your fingers. Curve your way down. Just out the center of each foot. And then stretch it open. Just going to do one more like this and then meet a trunk. So you lift the arms, start with the head, look down and into the abdominals. Try to avoid momentum. Come up with the strength that I know you all have. And then we're coming back. And we're only going to go down as far as the tip of the shoulder blades. Hold your upper arm, curl the arms lower as they can see in. And extend the legs up and start pumping, inhaling and exhaling. You're pulling yourself forward and up. As you exhale, you pull the belly down so you lift the spine a little deeper into the mat. Let's stretch out long. Let's try to picture energy streaming out through the center of each foot, join an arc through the air, and be the strong, pushing actively down and actively up. Bend your long wrists are straight. And see if here you can come up just a little bit deeper. Try to pull your head and your chest closer to your thighs. So we breathe in completely as the whole body expand. Breathe out completely and do them all together. And just one more breath. And now pull the knees in. Let yourself down. Turn your head. Easily from one side to the other and bring down into the opposite shoulder blade as your head tips away. All right, and then we're going to one of their beds for our single leg. So reach for the band and place it on the right foot. Pull back as you lift the leg up into the air. And anchor your elbows down slightly closer to your waist. And then just inhale to point the foot, exhale to flex a couple of times. Work the articulation through the foot so you really feel that work in the foot and in the calf. Look to be high enough to also feel that stretch and make a little release of the hamstring. And then we end with the soft point. And the elbows are anchored, so the hips inhale to bring the leg. Across the body and exhale, bring up low. Hips are steady and stable as you pull the legs out to the side and up to the sky. So reach over, take it down, arch up out to the side, lift up to the sky, and reach again. Go a little further with every circle, reaching further and further out into space. We do one more in this direction. Use the shortest. Inhale possible and the longest exhale you can manage. We're going to run out of air at the top of the movement and take a deep breath in as we reverse the direction going out to the right. Circle low, pull it all the way over without lifting the hip, and then bring the leg high and feel that length in the back of the leg from the hamstrings. So keep pushing out into the back and pulling back with the arms into the ground if you do. The left side of the body gets heavy even before the leg moves right and vice versa. Just let your legs really enjoy this feeling of circling in the air, stretching the muscles on all sides of the leg. We're going to finish this one up and then we get to the stretch. So we come here to the top and the right hand will close into the band. Externally rotate the leg, anchor your elbows, and pull the leg out to the side. The left hip is going to get heavier to keep your body steady here across the pelvic girdle. And then we just rock the leg a little gently here towards your shoulder and away. On the exhale, we pick the leg up, lift it high, switch hands at the top, and now the leg can go over, crossing over, reaching the right leg to the left, while you extend the right arm and look out of the other fingertips and palm. Pull the leg towards the left shoulder and then rotate internally. Take one more stretch into the glute, into the low back, while still keeping the right shoulder blade down. That gives you the best diagonal stretch across the course of front and back. Exhale, unwind the body here to the push with the leg. 
get a little hug, pull it up higher, that's what you want, and what you need, bend the knee as necessary, and then we'll pull the knee in, and just take the knee into your chest, and break it once more, and then slide the leg forward, and shake up the legs. Again, you feel a difference in the side you just worked, and the side you haven't worked yet. And so here we go for the other side. So pull the left leg in, the bend is on the foot. And we lift the leg high, anchor the elbows down, and slide them forward so the neck gets longer and the shoulders keep away. And we'll do a couple of different flexes here with the double turn, triple heel. If we really need to escape from being in shoes on flat surfaces, we feel how much they enjoy this. And then some point, and we circle inhale across the body and then reach forward and below. And just want to rotate out to the side without shifting your position on the back. The weight will change and you can use that shift in weight to help you stabilize your body. Right, so think about dropping down into the left side as you move over to the right, and then push the right side of the body into the ground as you pull the weight out around to the left. We'll do a couple more. The shortest inhale possible, the longest exhale you can manage. So how the belly draws deep, deep, deep at the top of the movement at the end of the breath. And keep pushing the foot up further and further into space. Now at the top of reverse, exhale rotate and pull the left leg to the left and circle it around. The inch leg rotates as it comes to the right, neutral at the top, and then also neutral at the bottom. See how heavy you can make the body, particularly the torso, and how light you can make the leg. Feel the support of the band as you work here. Then we'll come here to the top, and the left hand will hold the band, open it out to the side, press the right foot down, and you rock the leg back and forth. Exhale to pull the leg up. Switch hands now so the right hand holds the strap. The left arm extends and you can come up gradually coming off of the hip, off of the waist, off of some of the ribs, but keep the shoulder blade heavy and push the leg out and away from you. Rotate it internally and pull it towards the right shoulder. You can bend the knee if that helps you get the better stretch in the upper leg and go back. We'll exhale to unwind. Lift the leg up as high as you can. Pull it back. Give yourself a nice little extra stretch with the hands of the band. And then we pull the knee in. Band to the side. It breaks the leg. The other leg stretches forward. So it reaches out across the room. And then we release the left leg next to the right one. Shake it out. You will have completely different hips than the ones you walked in with. All right, so let's pull the right leg in and then lift the left leg up to the ceiling to rock forward and up, rolling like a ball. So, edges of the feet together, we'll hold on to the shins and curl the tail out as you lift your feet, elbows wide and forward to increase the curve in your upper back. And now we roll. Inhale, lift the tail, roll just down to the scapula, put the shoulder blades and hands up the back. So, you never want to roll onto your neck or your head. So it's a good idea to keep the knees down into your belly the whole time. So around your back, foot in the air, that's what's off the mat. Use your breath, the inhale takes you back just to the tip of the blade. Your exhale should already be starting before you change direction. And that will carry you through one more. And then from here, we go into the abs series. So you can hold on to the right leg. And as you curl back, we'll reach the left leg out and away. Push the shin up into your hands and lay your descent down to the upper of curl and pull that knee close. Inhale, switch the legs and exhale, switch again. One pulls it tight and the other leg reaches out. Use the connection of your hand to help you reinforce the upper of curl. Then try to retain it to the best of your ability as you release your hands. We're going to end with the left leg pulling in and then pull right leg to meet it, one hand to the shin. Inhale, stretch up, fingers and toes, circle wide, embrace the legs in with your arms, 
stretch again, put the arms on this further away from center as you're able to maintain this tension of your spine on your back. Breathe in completely. And then exhale and swoop the arms around, gather it in, one last one. And now scissors from here, right leg up, left leg forward. Push the leg away, increase the upper up curl. And we inhale, switch the legs. And exhale, switch again. One leg shoots down, one leg shoots up. Work into your arms, you want to feel the arms pull. And the legs press out against that. So you firm up the arms a bit and feel a, a deeper connection to the upper abs. We're going to end with the left leg up. Bring the right leg to meet it. Support your head. Pull the head up and the elbows down again. Squeeze the legs together for your double leg lower lift. The legs shoot out with the chest slide across the sky. Exhale, pull the belly deep and lift the legs up. The gaze is still focused down. And reach it away. You determine how far you go. Just feel yourself go only as far as you can keep the back in its more neutral position. Try to pull the waist down, but even tipping the tail up as you extend the legs. You might get a little further, you feel more work into the core. And let's do that once more. If you lose control of the arch of your back, you go too far. You know when it doesn't feel good. So here we switch to the twist. Up and forward. You rotate and you curve forward using the oblique abdominals to pull the armpit towards the upper inner thigh. The legs try to straighten in and out from the hip joint. And the rotation should be within the same framework of your hips on the mat. So in other words, there's no like side bending as you rotate and lift. On this one, so come up a little bit higher for this last bit, and then lay it back down. Embrace both knees in, hug your spine, or actually you're hugging your knees to stretch the spine, and then rock back and forth, side to side. So the spine is still happy, that's the idea. All right, and then we'll stretch the legs forward and the arms back. Open your body up to the ceiling, to the sky, and we're lifting up the forward spine stretch. You lift the arms, head back, chest, exhale. As you come up, open the legs, lift the arms up in the air for the advanced spine stretch position. So the palms are back, we're going to lift up. We're going to keep the lower part of the spine vertical, vertical backwards over the back, and then forward, down the hip. Reach out forward and fall out and down. Try aiming the top of your head, aim your tail up to the space between your heels and curve the waist up and back into your spine. Press down with your heels with the sits bones and stack yourself up with your foot on your back and zipping it up the invisible wall behind you. Come to the top of the wall and want to fall the shoulder blades, the chest, the neck, and the head over the front. Come back to center. And go for you to go. Go again. So you pull the waist back so you get that feeling of lifting up and over the visible beach ball here. Wrap your body around the curve of the ball. Press down and start to lift. It's like that ball is up the front of your body. And then you pick it up and draw it behind you. We keep the lower part of the torso really vertical here. So we can get over to the back. Exhale forward over time. Almost the pull here from the back of the skull and the base of the skull. Then over and down, hang onto your legs, your ankles, your feet, whatever you can reach. And then we're sliding to the end for open with balance and rock up. So hands between the legs, hands on top of your ankles. Be sure you're not askew, right? It's going to be your roll back, depending on how you organize yourself on your mat. And now here we extend the right leg up, stretch and fly, and then pull the heel down, heels connect, and then we extend the left leg up, stretch, and then bring it back. Right leg extends, shoulders stay relaxed, the knees behind you, and now the left. 
Good. Come down. Good. Let's see up. Come up. And then pull it back. Reach again. And pull back again. Taking up one more time and get ready to roll. So we send the legs. And it's probably go a little bit to the outside. And then we look at our abs. We round the back again and we roll. Lift the tail, roll back to your shoulder blades. Exhale, come up onto balance. And again, rolling back and forward. The body's a little like a sledge. You want to keep the foot even on the right hand side. This is where you can start to tell if you have a dominant side. Start rolling up to one side or the other. Maybe you're just not paying attention. Or some days you're a little less free right now, right? So we roll it back, come forward and up, and then close the legs. We see arms out, hold your teeth in position, pull the tail up, and try to get a little further back on your safety. You're going to push the legs away and curl the side down. The heels touch when the blades do, and you come out of your upper arm. You just did half of a teaser on the way down. That was beautiful. So now from here, we're going to pull the legs in and lift the legs up towards the ceiling for corkscrew. First, though, let's just tip them over to one side to bring them over, look away. See how far you can pick up the hip without collapsing and falling into the ground. Exhale, bring the legs up by pulling the hip bone to press up. So the right hip bone is going to move diagonally across the body to bring the legs over to the left. And you're going to really push into both the arms, trying to drop your right shoulder blade into the ground. Exhale, and with the left hip bone up, roll we'll across that way back. And now let's continue lifting the left hip and press the legs over to the right. And then exhale back to center. So you felt your obliques work. You had to feel that control through the whole body. And now we're doing a little bigger corkscrew than we normally do. Typically, we do a, a small circle on the ceiling while the hips try to remain steady on the mat. And you do one in each direction. For today, let's go a little bit larger. So you can take the leg over, get a slight tip of the pelvis off the ground, come around, not too low, right? You want to still feel that you have control and you're not over straining the back, come back to center. And then as we go over to the left, the right hip lifts slightly. Keep the shoulder blades grounded as you come around, tip to the other side, and back up to the side. So we reverse each time. Each circle is an inhale and then a longer exhale. Roll across the sacrum, around the SI joints, come back to the top, and then tip it over again. Yes. So you can do this as long as you're not just using momentum to pull you around. At this point in your practice, I know you all have good control for your core. So one more, tip it over. Come around and then end going from the left to the right. Bring the legs up high and then settle the spine down. Both hips are grounded. And then we're rolling forward and up. Two, open the legs here for soft. So you elevate your hips if you need to or want to. Extend the arms out. And legs a little wider than your back. Rotate to your right and drive over. And slide the hand down towards the ankle, towards the heel, and pull the opposite shoulder up and back behind your body. Coming up, hold the rotation and line and smile in the other direction. So now the back of the right hand slides out along the lower left leg. The back arm shoots out long, really feel that stretch across the wrist. And then coming upright, center. Remember the right arm now is going to lower it down, come to the floor, come up. And as you spiral the upper body, that pushes the arm and the hand back on more of a diagonal. As you dive over, over, find more rotation through your spine. And you lift to come up, center here, twist again. As you go over to the left, you're going to press your right glute, your right sits bone into the ground like that sits bone was a bolt going into the floor. Pull yourself up here, unwind, spiral, twist, and dive. Upright, center, one more time to your left. See how long you can make that 
wingspan here from the fingers of one hand to the fingers of the other. Nice. And then lift to come up, center the arms lower, place them together. I will take the roller for our squats. Put it in front of you, flip over onto your stomach. And extend the arms forward. Over your roller. It's halfway between uppers and lifts. Head floats here, ears between arms. And then pull the shoulder blades down your back as you widen the collarbones. Bring the gaze forward, pull the heart forward. Lift up. Turn good curves through the upper back. Pull the weight is still into the pelvic girdle. And then zip your belly, your waist, your ribs, your chest into the ground as you go down gradually here, putting the head off the floor and looking slightly forward in the head. So we pull the arms back, engaging the lats, come forward and up, heart lifts, stretch the abdominal wall, and then release it back down here. A little bit at a time as the belly shortens, the back lengthens, even the back of the neck lengthens as you lower your gaze. One more time, the power of the sprawling and into the left, up, 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 push down through the arms, through the wrists, pull up with the eyes, pull up with the chest, and then keep looking up on your way down to so really delay your descent. And then we'll push the roller aside and sit back into the child's pose. Your hands down, your arms can stretch forward or get back by your hips, whichever you prefer. And breathe into your back. Then from here, we're coming forward into the single leg hips and come forward onto your forearms. Either make a fist with each hand or press the palms into the ground. In either case, you're going to pull back with your elbows, pull forward up with your chest, and see if you can get the same feeling of length through that abdominal wall. You kick the right heel in one, two, and then down on the left. Pulse one, two, and down on the left. The pelvis is heavy, like it's filled with sand. And you're trying to press that into the ground as you pull up and away from it. That means the arms stay active as you keep working for the stretch in the abdominal wall. Eyes up, shoulders down. Ice pick arms, dig them deep, and then pull them back. One last set. And then we're going to lower down, turn the head to your right, and overlap your hands up on the rib cage. And then from here, we take a deep inhale to lengthen the body, head to tail the toes. As you exhale, take both legs three times one, two, three in unison. They go down. You bring the arms back, you set to your head. As you reach the arms back behind you, you lift the chest up. And then come down, turn your gaze to the left, right here to the back, and pulse three times with your legs here. So pulsing at the knee, pressing the front of the pelvis into the back. You reach the legs long. You can intertwine the thumbs if you need to give a straight, or just bring the palms in or to the sky if your arms reach back. And then keep the arms low. You come down, turn to the right, and pulse again. Pumping here. Trying to kick the butt with your heels. And then press the legs down, reach up and back, and reach forward and up with the eyes and the chest. We go down here last time, turn to the left, and three kicks again. Everything gives you a stretch into your quads, into your pillows. And now you ground yourself here through the legs, through the top of your feet. We're also trying to open up the front line across the ankle and the top of the foot here. And then down you go. Push off the floor, come up, child's pose again. And then we stack the spine bottom to top. And let's do some neck pull. So here, we can start, let's say we do one with the TheraBand, and the size you want to keep that, or move to hand spray. So, feet are about five inches apart. And we'll take the center of the band around both feet. The neck pull is very similar to roll up, except you start with a neutral spine. 
You want to sit up on your sit bones, extend the legs out. So it's an inch first to go back. So you lean back, try to keep that plank body. And you can only go so far, and then you need to look down, tuck the tail up, round your back, and then roll back down one vertebra at a time into the ground. Because if you sit there, band, you're not going to be taking your hands behind your head and rolling during the band. So we're going to lift the head up, start a roll up, pull the hips in, the elbows can be wide, you come up and over, and then you pull the hands back as you dive your hips over your knees. So think of the shoulders falling back, which is the reach back to the elbows, and curve your spine over the thighs, then stack your spine bottom to top, coming all the way up, and look at the horizon. Okay, so good. So as you advance this exercise, the hands come up behind your head, the thumbs are along the occipital ridge. You pull the neck along by lifting the skull and elongating the spine. And then you're going to hinge back again, lean back, tuck, you can pull the elbows forward. You can even control your descent by bringing the arms forward as necessary to go down with control all the way down. To lift, you can take your fist into the opposite palm, straight line from elbow to elbow, lift your head, neck, and shoulders, exhale, push into the arm, come up. As soon as you're up and it's possible, bring your hands behind your head, and you're diving over your legs without pitching down on the neck or head. You're pulling the head long, to again feel that length into your spine. It's called neck pull, so you want to lengthen it, pull it, but don't press it down, don't press it. And then keep feeling that length here in the neck as you stack your spine bottom to the top. And so we go again. So the heels reach forward, the chest pull back, you lean back and find your sit bones in your plank. You look down the top. You can do whatever you want to with the arms. Curve the way down. The abs support you, the psoas takes you back. And then if you're doing the arm position like so, you would switch your hands and lift them up. More best option, hands behind your head. In both directions, bring your hands here, pull the neck long, pull the waist back, and then we stack the spine up one more time. We come all the way up and then down again, plank first. We end up with the spine on the mat to start our shoulder bridge from here. So we back, look down top, look out of the legs. Curve your body. Rail down. And then the arms circle around at your side. We bend the knees, press the feet into the ground. So for shoulder bridge, feet apart, just hip width, maybe four or five inches. And begin rocking the tail forward and up, the waist pushes down. You pull back with the heels and forward with the knees. First come to a plank, and then you're going to rotate the arms externally. Push the shoulders down, lift the chest, the blades pull together underneath you, push down to the inner edges of your feet so the knees don't splay open, and then push your hips up and use your glutes. Now from here, we're gonna to roll to the inner arm. The back widens as the chest narrows, so you can draw your sternum down towards your spine, you can draw the spine down between the scapula, and you can drape your body down one vertebra at a time. Come all the way down, snake your spine down, Go over the sacrum and then lower the tail and your waistline points off the mat. Do that one more time like this. So push down, maybe go back with the heels, engage the back line of your legs. Start lifting the tail up and through your legs. The knees reach forward to the far wall, coming up into your plank, then taking into thoracic extension by pushing the outer upper shoulder down. Go a little to the outside of the arm and push it into the floor with that outer edge. Push the hips up, find a little hip extension here. And then we roll to the inner arm, fill the scapula widen on your back so you can broaden the back and curve the upper back down. If you don't do that, probably just go to like, keep a plank body. And the first thing that will touch will be your sacrum. But we want to work through all those upper vertebra before we get down to the lower ones and then roll through rocking the pelvis to get the tail down. And now we're going to lift up and just do two sets of lift hips here. So we're going to curl the tail up, feel the pressure of the 
waistline into the mat before we lift it. Come all the way up here. And then pull the right knee into your chest. Lift the right foot up to the ceiling. Reach out. Lower. Flex the foot, bring it up. So you lifted the foot. You lifted the hip bone. The right side of your body is kind of lifted off the left. Flex the lift. Point the foot, lift up to the foot. Bend the knee, lift up to the knee. Lower the foot down. Roll through the foot. Extend into the right foot. Lift your hips a little higher. Try to balance them out. Push through the arm. We pull the left knee in. The knee lifts up. We extend the foot. The foot lifts up. Point to go down. Flex to lift. Foot down. Flex high. One more. Reach. And reach again. So we point the foot. We bend the knee. We lower the foot. Roll through the foot. Then equally into both feet and square off the hips to the ceiling. Roll the spine down. The shoulders lift up. The arm takes in slightly. Curve your weight down. The lips and stretch in the hips to the back. And then finally release the tail. Doing it one more time, starting with the left leg and beginning with the flex foot. So we curve the tail up. We roll the hips, the waist, the ribs off the ground. Push the top of the shoulders into the floor. Stand into that right foot. Pull the left knee in. Extend the leg, lift up to the heel. And we flex down. Point to lift. Flex down. Point to rise. This is full body, right? Flex down. Point lift. Bend the knee, lift the knee. Lower the foot. Roll through the foot. Stand in the left leg. Pull the right knee up. Lift through the knee. Lift the hip, extend the leg, flex, lift through the heel. And we go down. And point to rise. Flex down, pull the hip up. Point to lift, or more, flex down. Point up, bend the knee. Lift the knee, lift the hip, lower the foot, roll through the foot, push down, lift your hips higher, balance it out, roll to the inner arm, and curve it back down into the ground. Come all the way down here, so we'll the tail at the end. Beautiful. So from here, let's rock, let's rock up for spine twist. Pull all the way up to sitting, extend the legs, do the flex, and the arms out to the side. Press down into the palms, lift up to the chest and the elbow, and we rotate to the right. Twisting one, two, three, lift to center and then to the left. Spin, spin, reach, back to center. This again will be an exercise where you might want to elevate your hips. You find it difficult because of the hamstring tightness or low back tightness to sit perched up on your six bones. And that is a win if you do that because you get more rotation, you'll get more mobility in your spine. And you'll get the strength in the right area. So don't ever worry if you use a prop that you're not doing the exercise correctly. You're doing it correctly for your body at the time to get the best results out of it. Come back to center and lower the arms down. And here we go back for jacket. So if you want, you can take your roller across into your hips or do it from the ground or don't do it at all. So it depends how your body feels right now. So this is an inversion um, which if you haven't been doing it in Pilates, you may have done it in yoga. So you'll lay down, pull the knees into your chest, and arms lift at your side. The gaze is always up. You never want to turn your head beneath your hands in the air. So we're going to lift the legs, press them forward, push through the arms and the hands in particular. Come up, push them back down. And you can start with the legs kind of low, and then lift them up using your glutes. Bring them down again. And then push the mat away with the heel of your hand. The shoulders will curve up a little bit. They have to. And especially if you're all tight in your chest. And like, who is it these days, right? So reach out. And anyway, if you try to push the shoulders down, you'll take your body into a plank or into extension, which is contradicting the body's need to round the upper back to come down safely here. So let your shoulders curve up as you push down through the palm of your hand. And then work your spine down, place your out to your working level. And let's do it again. It's an inhale to lift the legs, exhale to lift the hips. Reach up if you want. Lower. And down we go. 
Try to bring the legs as close to your chest as you can. So you're getting a nice stretch here in the back of your legs on um, the we'll return to the ground. And one last one. You can also try to keep legs a little higher up or over the hips. That will be more load, more work into your core, into your arms as you bring your body down. And then just a full knees in. And then roll up to sit. Okay, so here's normally where we go into side kicks, but I know you wouldn't want to miss your teasers today. So we're doing that first. Well, I'm probably skipping side kicks altogether. Um, next time. So and we're lucky we have an extension on the Pilates spring season. So we're not stopping today, but we have two more weeks here in the match box. And then we're off for like two weeks. So we go through the 15th, then we're off for two weeks, and we're back here on the 4th right after 11.30. Yeah, how long is it? Last four months. It's, I think it's at least to the end of July. It might even slip over into the first week in August. I can forget exactly. So I know, that's so great. So any of you around this summer will be here. Oh, and Harley was talking about maybe getting the space and using the screen to run some of the videos like um, at the end of July. So I will be here, but she'll be here, she's hoping. So keep an eye out for information on that. Because we'd love for everyone to keep practicing. Like, and if you're off campus, you can still like go on the YouTube videos. So, okay. So a teaser, right? So let's start. You can always use a the therapist around your feet. And we're going to bring knees up, curl the tail up, rock back onto your sacrum. Elbows can go wide, that helps you round the upper back, and then lift your feet when they're ready to come up. So for women, typically the toes are at eye level. For guys, usually the feet are a little bit lower. It just depends like where your center of balance is. So now we're going to fold the arms out, or you can hold your hands to your legs. And slide the legs out of the way and then pull them in. Push the legs forward, pull the torso into position in midair. Imagine holding a ball between your arms, between your hands, squeeze it, and back. And then we're going to curl the tail up and start to roll the spine down a little bit. And then you lift the head, pull above your abdominals, pull the psoas muscle to come up. And we do that again. So this is our warm up for our teaser. Yeah, be sure that you've got the pad underneath you, that it doesn't hurt your low back. And sometimes people who have like, um, like they had like a break in their coccyx and their tailbone, they need a little extra padding under each of the glutes so that they sort of have like a, a channel in between so the tail never really touches the mat. So it's always an option to take a towel and roll it on either side for that to happen. So now we're going to extend the arms. Or bring your hands to your legs, start to lift the tail, look down. You push the legs away from you as you roll back. You want to get your heels down and the legs touch. Bring your upper curl in, come out of the upper curl. So the arms lengthen at your side, palms are up. Start to lift your head and neck and the shoulders. Exhale, scoop the arms forward and drop your legs. Come to your teaser, you can bend your knees or not. And then we push the feet away and round the tail up. Try to keep toes at a level if you're, if that suits your body proportions. And we do one more. Lift your head, come forward. You can also do this with the fair band. Let's stay here. Inhale, lower legs slightly, exhale, lift. Inhale, lower, exhale, lift. One more, inhale, down, exhale, up. Hold it, reach, now tuck. Try to get your sacrum down, push the feet away, come all the way down. Oh, and we're so glad we're here. That was amazing. Good work. So let's flip over onto our stomach. Use the roller for swimming. And stretch out those abs as you flip them on. Okay, so arms extend. Pull the shoulders back, lift the head and chest, and just kick your legs here from the glutes. Going up at the chest, up at the eyes. And 
and one more breath. And then we can roll back down and flip the ball over to the side. Okay, we're coming up for seal. So from here, the edges of your feet together, and wrap your hands, arms go between your legs, wrap your hands around the outside of the ankles. Rock back, so you the tail, you can curve back on your hips, and come over with that. And here we open and close the thighs, so open and close the feet, top one, two, three. Go back, try to keep the head off the ground, lift the butt in the air. Come one, two, three. Come forward to lift and clap again. We're trying for a moment of suspension when your hips are in the air. Lifting my hips maybe a little bit higher as I try to do that. Sometimes it works really well, sometimes not so much. The important thing is to smack your head and when you come up, clap like you, like you just successfully pulled it off even when you're upside down. <laughs> so we take the wings when we get them, right? And then take it back, step up, forward, one more time. And back. And we are good. We are done for today. Yay! Thank you. Thank you for coming to class and doing such a great job, always.